can still let them in I, at the meeting. I have unlocked the meeting. So we'll, anyone that comes in will be chimed in. So we'll be good to go. Mr. Carter <laughs> is there now at the bottom. So. Okay. So I need a motion then to um, open. Um, I'm, I make a motion. Open. Second. Thank you, John or Beth, and then second. Angie was first, I was second. Oh, sorry, I didn't hear that. That's all right. There's Aaron Moore. Hi, Aaron. Okay. Aaron. Uh, all in favor of opening the open session, raise your hand. Okay, motion carries. Thank you very much. Okay, so. The agenda says to have the Pledge of Allegiance and we voted to approve the agenda as presented. Oh, so we can say it right here. And if I stand, you won't see me. That's all right. I'm going to stand. All right. I pledge allegiance, <laughs> pledge allegiance to the, to the, the flag, flag of the United, United States, States of America and to the Republic, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation under, under God, God indivisible with liberty and justice, justice for all. That was a little odd. <laughs> I've never done okay. it without fight before. Uh, yeah, and the echoes. <laughs> all right, so we do not have visitors to address the board. We'll move straight to um, the consent agenda. So I need a motion to approve all items on the consent agenda as presented. So make a motion. Second. Okay. Um, I'll take Angie and Renee. Any questions or items of concern? Nope. You said this is the consent agenda, not the minutes? Does it have the minutes? No, we have the minutes down. No. It in new has, go ahead, John. I don't mean to interrupt. It has the February 27th regular meeting in case <laughs> right. and the March 16th meeting is in new business. Okay. Any other questions about items on the consent agenda? All right. All in favor of approving the consent agenda as presented, raise your hand. Motion carries. <clears throat> that then takes us to the superintendent report. So, John, we'll let you. All right. Um, have an update just on some of the COVID-19 items. I don't know if you've been paying attention to social media. Is uh, Miss Jackson and Miss Phillips have coordinated uh, expansion of our lunch program. Rather, we're going to expand that starting on Monday. Uh, it was brought to our attention that some of the members of the community were having some difficulty um, getting here as far as gas, money, et cetera, because we're such a large district. And so we are going to now drop off on Monday utilizing bus drivers, mini buses, and minivans, and sending a couple bus drivers to each location will be um, at the Hillsborough Intermediate at Valley Ambulance at 110, uh, Mappaville Fire Department, Goldman Fire Department off Lee May, the Goldman Fire Department over by Lake Tishomingo, and the Rain Tree Golf Course. So we'll have uh, additional drop off locations there. That seems to be going. The lunch has been growing. Um, I visited with Josh down at DeSoto is they've went up about 100 in the last week. And so to me, that is probably a sign of the times of the stockpiles are getting smaller and I would expect our lunches to continue uh, to grow. Um, as you know, we extended school out through the 27th. That was in conjunction uh, with the health department and uh, Mr. Gannon's stay at home order uh, that we made that and had a meeting up here at school. All the superintendents and county government and the health department came up uh, to give us guidance and, and move forward there. 
Um, whether we are going to come back at all this year, I'm hopeful, but that's going to be a wait and see approach. It'd be great to have them uh, come back the last four weeks because there's a lot of different things that we need to do. And I know that the teachers miss their kids, but we also, you know, prom, uh, it's a lot of things for the seniors. So working towards um, making plans if that isn't the case, but I want to commend all of our teachers and staff for kind of coming together. Uh, Kelly called my, my wife, Kelly said that we had a thing in the editorial, just, uh, you know, parent, uh, bragging on our teachers yes. for their communication. And that's, Damn that's that. huge. And uh, they've just done an amazing job. Um, <laughs> one of the things too, for me, for on a personal level, I don't want to call school for the year. And I've expressed that is uh, some of the schools, Wright City and Warrington, one, I think it's too early to call that. But the silver lining to this whole situation is um, our teachers are communicating with each other as well as with our students. And there's been a lot of team building, uh, lesson planning for next year, a lot of really positive things have come out of that. Um, one of the things, there's going to be a news story also uh, at, I believe, 10 o'clock. Um, they filmed it down on our campus, a news story about the Broader Ridge Barn being the supply depot. Uh, Bro Chief Gauday, I believe, did the interview. Uh, he asked me to be on, but I have a face for radio, so I <laughs> declined. Uh, I said, that's all you, buddy. So he did that interview at four o'clock today. Uh, so that'll be a nice little piece uh, talking about our community there. Um, Which channel? Channel five. five. Channel five at 10 o'clock. So we'll have our, hopefully our board meetings done by then. Uh, so we can watch that. <laughs> That's a shoe slur. <laughs> I apologize. But uh, yeah, we should be done uh, by then. And that'll be a nice uh, article there. And we're helping out with the supply depot. One of the things too that's later on is um, the fire department and the health department stopped by last week. And one of the big needs that we have in our community is childcare for those workers that are um, putting in tremendous amount of hours. Dennis Gannon contacted me and asked if we could do something uh, related to daycare and to follow up with them. Um, because the Jefferson County Sheriff's Department as well, and potentially some county workers uh, for the, uh, just they're putting in some long hours and that's been a real struggle for them as all these schools have closed. And we'll talk about that in a bit. Uh, the spring, any questions on any COVID questions? John, I, I wanted to throw out uh, about prom. There was a thing on the news this week, I can't remember if it was local or national, where this DJ is actually going to have a, for a school district, going to have a virtual prom on on computer where the kids dress up at home and whatever, and he plays music. I don't know. It was on the news. It sounded pretty cool. And I know we've got DJs that work for the district, um, or teachers that are DJs or paras or whatever. And so that might be an option if we can't have an actual prom, is some type of virtual prom. Okay. One of the things, and this is beginning discussions I visited with Dr. Freeman, but I also visit with Mandy Alley, is because it sounds like our Hillsborough Festival um, is in danger, I mean, being in May. But I think that we could still do something as a community. Is let's say we have to do it in June or July to do all of those events. I'm confident a lot of our teachers would come back in for the senior walk and maybe do a community where there's a parade around the school, but, um, and do baccalaureate, senior awards and graduation all on the same night. But if we're doing it with the community, maybe there could be fireworks and it'd be something that's different, but still an event uh, that they remember. And prom, um, we're gonna have to get creative. So it may uh, be like that. And, and maybe hopefully um, we can do something even in June for a prom. I know that that's a, a huge thing for our students. So any other questions on that? 
Um, a couple of things, the MSBA regional meeting was canceled um, and they're gonna be putting some things on the website. I haven't seen the videos on the website. Um, if I do, then I will send those out. The April elections were delayed. Um, I sent out an email that um, we may have had to wait until after the election to, uh, for Ms. Heine, who's leaving us, to switch out with Mr. Stevenson, who will be joining us. Um, but the governor has waived that. So Celinda has also said that at the next meeting, uh, Mr. Stevenson will be sworn in uh, mm -hmm. for that um, at that time. And then we'll also have the reorganization of the board will occur at our next meeting. Um, Desi waived the state assessment. Uh, and then just some information on emergency use of school buses. As such, we're using them for delivering food uh, and some of those things. I just included that in there um, for some posterity's sake, for historical, for some of the actions. Uh, it has removed the revised statute <laughs> in there. And then also um, some information from the governor that they included just I added that to the bottom just so we had it from a historical standpoint. That's all I got. Hey, thank you, John. So we'll move into new business. First item is to approve the minutes from our March 16th emergency meeting. Do I have a motion to do that? I make a motion. Second. Okay, so Angie and Beth, is that correct? Was, all right. And that was our meeting where we talked about our pandemic response plan and so forth. Any questions about the, the minutes? All right, all in favor of approving the minutes from March 16th as presented, raise your hand. Uh, all opposed? Abstentions. Okay, thank you very much. So we had two abstain and the rest were yes votes. So that's five yes. <coughs> we'll move then to item B, um, which has to do with the child care provider assistance. So I need a motion to approve the recommended application to provide childcare to the children of first responders, health department employees, and applicable health care employees as well. I, I make a motion. Okay, thank you, Renee and Angie. Any discussion or concerns? Can I make a point of clarification? Yes. Is this here, and I'm going to share my screen for a moment, um, is we are still in the, um, this is asking for approval for us to submit, oh, excuse me. Oh, not that, we'll get there. <laughs> Almost. This application, a couple things that I did is this is the application to operate a child care center, which is kind of unique since we are a school, but we are still have to apply. Um, the person that does the approvals has already checked and our facilities already been signed off on. This is uh, just gives us the license to operate. That said, there are a few things that this is approval basically saying, we're approving Ms. Walker to sign this and the board to send it to the state so we can have a child uh, care facility here. And we will move in that direction, but I, I do wanna have a caveat that if there becomes a huge red flag where we can't. Music has, a, has said that, we, um, that they would approve the insurance of it. Uh, I included that uh, on in here where they had an email and communicated that we will cover that. Um, 
we're still working through with the health department. One of my concerns was the staffing of it and safety of our um, students and staff. And obviously the health department, they said that they would work with us to uh, develop a system where as the kids are coming in and the staff are being checked for fever every day, especially because it's workers who are gonna be exposed to that and we gotta try to keep everyone healthy. We're not necessarily potentially having a, a school nurse on staff um, every day, because I think some of our nurses are actually assisting the health department. At the health department, I've given them the authorization to help work there and address some of the needs. Um, but they're gonna work with us to make sure that people are safe. One of our concerns is we didn't plan on charging anyone but we had that conversation in the office uh, yesterday of how to work through some of those logistical items. Um, when you open a daycare, everybody has a need right now, and I don't know that we definitely don't want to extend it beyond first responders, the sheriff's department, uh, and that group, because I think it opens Pandora's box as far as the need there. And in doing it too, and I visited with the health department, we had a meeting up here um, that there may be an issue where we can't staff it. Let's say somebody comes down with it. If we can't staff it, they have to work with us and be okay with that. It's gotta be, and they were, I mean, they understand. And Ms. Brown uh, contacted me this afternoon. Is there anything we need? And they're gonna do everything in their power to work with us because they need us, but they also understand the position that we're in. Um, I contacted Celinda and I've contacted Ed Plus. Uh, if any other district has been contacted, there's none around us, we're the first. Uh, and partly that's because we're in the county seat. And so um, some of this is uncharted, uncharted territory. So we're trying to figure some of this out as we go. So basically in summation, this is asking for approval to send in um, mm -hmm. the form. And if everything checks out on our end where we're comfortable, like, hey, we got staffing. we Because we're going to ask for our staff members to volunteer, our paraprofessionals. Because um, I don't want to get into a situation of mandating, especially on some of our paraprofessionals that may have their own health issues or have family members that have health issues. So we're gonna do everything in our power to staff it, but we just wanna, you know, we're basically opening a daycare in a two week period of time. You know, so trying to make sure that we're protecting the district is what we're gonna move forward. If we have anything that would stop us, I will communicate with everyone immediately. So your I? goal is, I'm sorry. Your goal uh, is to start this in two weeks? No, our goal is, to move forward with it. Hopefully we would have it started in two weeks. The sooner the better for our, for the health department. But um, my what I was trying to make a point is, typically when you're starting a daycare, it's you know doing case studies. We're like zero to daycare and trying to figure out, we got the food situated. We're fine with that uh, because we're already serving meals. We figure we'll have to have three staff members because we'll have, we got to keep it under 10 kids, right? In, in an area. And so we would use the primary and we got to come up with the cleaning of that facility every day. We need the healthcare and the screening coming in. Um, and the hours of operation? Thinking seven to six, seven to six. And Monday we would Friday. require, what's that? Monday through Friday. Yeah. And I told, uh, the health department, the fire department, for my purposes as a school, because I don't want to get into playing referee of who can get in and who cannot, is I would require or like to require, like Chief Gauday would have to sign off that John Isaacson is a firefighter working the day shift and needs that assistance rather than, um, or if, you know, the health department or a medical, or if it was, uh, an outside medical that their supervisor is saying, yes, they're on shift, they need it 
for that. And we don't get into situations where nobody's, they're not working that day, but we're watching their kids. That's not our, the spirit of this. I don't know who I interrupted. Are you good? With you? you clarified the hours. Thank you. Because for some reason, I read something and it gave me the impression overnight hours. Maybe it was talking about nap time, but there was something about sleeping. Yeah. And that's why I wanted to clarify the hours. Okay, then. Any other questions or thoughts before we vote? Okay, so the motion is to approve the application for this child care program. All in favor, raise your hand. Thank you, John. Okay, motion carries. The next item has to do with uh, a grounds, mowing in the grounds contract. So I need a motion to award the mowing and ground maintenance contract to Russell Tree and Lawn Service the period beginning April 1st, 2020 and ending in November 1st, 2022. I make a motion. Thank you, Angie. Second. And Beth. Any questions? Is that the mayor? That's the mayor's son. Yes, it is. Okay. Well, and to that end, if you look at the bid and I visited with him again, today and I visit with Ray. Ray had actually, uh, when we discussed this, um, basically the bids were the exact same from mowing. There was a $7 difference. Uh, I believe MLS is from Festus. Uh, Russell is here in town. Their mulching rate, uh, MLS is $3,600. Uh, Stars and Stripes is $2,850 and Another company was 1863. Uh, Mr. Russell has $500. And I, I contacted him by phone, like, how are you going to afford to do that? Uh, and our expectation uh, in weeding the beds is much uh, cheaper. You know, all those other type issues are much cheaper. How are you going to make that happen? Because our expectations, and I use the words, I want this place to look like Six Flags. Is, do you have the manpower to do it? And that's going to be our expectation because it's a big job. And, and he said, absolutely. He said he had seven or eight guys that this, this is going to be their largest account. So we're going to be a priority. I told him that we would be issuing a contract that has kind of a, a mutual 30 to 60 day if if he we feel like the service isn't there we can get out of it by giving 30 day notice and likewise if he feels he can't meet our needs he can get out of it as well uh, and so we're making that the mulching and the side pieces is significantly cheaper he says he can do it uh, and so we're recommending that you know, it's a comp it's a t it's a taxpayer company that's we'll see. It's uh, he's given me every uh, uh, sure. Right. Give him a shot. Well, they're in, they're also here in Hillsboro. That's they're in here that's here in Hillsboro, and I, I don't want that to be a negative. It's just it's a we're his biggest client. He he said that. I said, sure. well, Cody. Uh, it's a big job and we have high expectations and I want this place looking nice. And that's why we're expanding it with the mulch is you got to live up to those expectations. And he's like, I will, sir. So that's our recommendation. Get a hold of his dad. So what's that? Plus we know where his dad is. So we can always oh, get sure. a <laughs> yeah. yeah. So any right. questions or thoughts? Okay. So let's, um, vote on the motion to approve the contract with Russell Tree and Lawn Service. All in favor? All right, motion carries. The next item has to do with our insurance benefits package. We'll start with the motion and then we'll let John um, discuss some things. Um, we need a motion to approve the SCEC insurance 
which will have the medical, dental, and vision. So I'll make a motion. Okay, so Beth and Angie. Okay, Jane and I attended the meeting that John had this past week. Um, was well attended, I would say. Probably one of the best attended committee meetings I've been to in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, John, you want to share a few things? Yep. Um, let's uh, bear with me here. I want to open okay. this up. I'm going to share my screen again. Can't see it. All right. Are you guys able to see that spreadsheet there? And I will make it larger. Zoom in on it a little bit. That would be helpful. Okay. Um, and I'm going to expand across here. All right. Is that better? Um, yes. Okay. These are the bids we received. Um, we went out to an RFP Much better. For, for all of uh, our insurance items. One of the things that drives the dental and vision um, is the health insurance. So OSBA, which is a, a consortium of schools um, in Southwest Missouri declined to bid uh, due to some of our claim outstanding high claims history. Um, so they said that they did not, they weren't going to bid at this time. EBA is another consortium of schools. Uh, they have two different plans. This is a, a no BJC, so it didn't include any of the Barnes Jewish um, facilities or doctors in that, that group. This was a fully insured plan uh, versus a self-insured that had um, the lower rates, which is anticipated with not having uh, BJC included in the plan. The SCEC, um, which we are currently a group of, in with we were placed kind of since our last meeting i told you that uh, i had made the motion to move from the one all for one pricing to a tiered uh system of pricing and they came back with six tiers anywhere from uh, a decrease uh in premium a five to eight percent decrease to us in tier two, which this represents an 11% increase. And I believe uh, after the 11% was a 30% increase, 46% increase, all the way up to 121% increase to the highest tier. So their uh, quote was 697, we fall into tier two, which would be an increase of $69 and 52 on the HSA side, an 11%. Um, that's with UHC. Our, our standalone quote to be fully insured with UHC was $758 and 619 on the uh, HSA, which is approximately a 24% increase. Going back to this EBA, they had a group, uh, plan that included Barnes Jewish, and you can see that's the impact of having Barnes on the network is about $50 a month uh, on those. And then MEUHP is a self-funded consortium that is, Dunklin is a part of that organization, and this is their rates here. Uh, we also were quoted full, fully insured rates uh, by Aetna, and Blue Cross Blue Shield, and that's their PPO on the $2,500 deductible and the $3,000 HSA rates. Um, so we've had lots of conversations at the meeting um, as well, and some of the things, and I put this in the board packet as far as considerations were, um, the staff wanted BJC to be in the plan. The SEC quote had the lowest overall cost for plans that include BJC networks. We're currently a part of the SEC, so consistency is maintained. One of the things that was brought up is with 
all the employees at home right now is open enrollment would be a tough situation and changing. Uh, they know the plans and it maintains consistencies with doctors and providers. Some of the concerns discussed where the SEC proposal accepted would be self-funded. <laughs> still on um, the hook if you don't run well, the potential <laughs> for assessment if claims are higher. Um, you know, some, a couple of the members expressed, you know, the frustration with the uh, assessment. And, and as we have that frustration, I mean, we don't want that to occur. The, our task um, with the SEC and, and those board meetings is I'm hopeful that with the tiering system that schools are appropriately priced. I don't know what every school is going to do, but I know that some of the unhealthier schools have left because 121% increase, you know, it's going from 628 for that district. We're going to 690. Some districts are going to $1,300 a month. And so it's not sustainable and they're leaving. I also, if the board approves this this evening, I've also committed to our insurance committee that if some of the other districts in the consortium that are very important, that are running healthy in their large districts, if there is any change, I know that um, some of them are having board meetings this evening. Is If some of those large districts that are running healthy would leave, um, we may have to have an emergency meeting, the board, because we may need to go to a different plan if they're gonna to try to re-rate, because we're already having an 11% increase. If, if a Sullivan or a Festus or some of those leave, we have to be open to doing that. I did contact um, the SEC. Uh, I think that there's some things in our favor. I'm cautiously optimistic. Um, that things are going to be better because it's set up differently. I think it's gonna be a smaller consortium. I was looking back at the vote to go to tiers today and it was 13 to six. And the six schools that voted no had the high rates, they didn't wanna pay it. Is we have to make decisions and uh, get information and hold UHC and USI's feet to the fire mm -hmm. that don't tell us what you think we want to hear. Tell us what we need to hear so that things are priced accordingly because I got, if, if our rates need to be $900 a month and they're ultimately in June of next year, if Ms. Genge and the board have to cut a check for $800,000, if ultimately they were, tell us that on the front end. Give us the good, the bad, the ugly uh, at that point. Right now, we have... Um, 4.6 million in cash reserves. Um, and they think that that's going to finish strong. One of the things, and I hadn't thought about this, I know I visited with the, uh, Kelly and uh, I think I visited with Ms. Welker. When I visited with, I asked, how is that cash position going to be to finish the year? And especially with COVID-19, and the response was, actually, it should be better than what you think. Like, you think it'd be really bad, but the thing that's not going to happen is no elective surgeries right now. People aren't getting a hip replaced. All of that's being pushed off. And a lot of these schools are leaving to go to a fully funded plan because it was cheaper, et cetera. So they're not going to be, the consortium isn't going to be getting that um, hit before the end of the year. And there is uh, pharmacy rebates estimated to be around a million dollars that'll hit in December of Janu in January that are based on the full consortium right now. But I guess they are six or nine months lag time on those. So there's gonna be uh, some cash going into that. I could also see us, our consortium of self-funded schools being four or five schools, and they're all large schools of similar size to Hillsboro, which I think, and we've talked about that as being uh, 
good because it's consistent. So the recommendation of the uh, committee and, um, and I also put all those notes is in the board docs uh, meeting there. I have the vote and did all of that uh, was that we accept um, SCEC as our uh, insurance provider. Kind of a few things on that. They will also do our dental and vision. So as I'm talking, I'll just finish that out is they'll do our dental and vision. They are out to bid for guardian right now. They don't expect more than a 10% increase. 10% um, sounds large and it's every penny adds up, but the dental plan as you'll see down below is $39. So we expect it's not a, a $50 increase, it'd be a $3 or $4 increase. So um, they would be providing all of our supplementals and our health insurance. Again, for next year, barring any major changes to enrollment that would have a negative impact potentially on Hillsborough that we would bring back to reevaluate. Okay? John, are you going to make the recommendation that we fund that? Is that part of this discussion as well? The dental and the vision? No, that's going to be uh, later on in the item. This is strictly to accept the provider. So the motion is to approve the SCEC insurance at this point, this provider. I make a motion. Well, we have the motion. I'm just waiting to see if there's any more questions. You seconded it a while ago. Yeah. <laughs> okay. If there are no more thoughts, then all in favor of approving um, the SCEC insurance plan, raise your hand. Beth, are you raising your hand or not? Yes. Okay. Well, I am. Then. I just couldn't see it. Sorry. <coughs> That's all right. Okay. So the next item has to do with the HRA rates. So I need a motion to approve the, the district HRA rates for the 2021 school year. I move. Move. Renee, move. Who, sec who did the second? Angie, was that John? Okay. So we'll do Renee and John. Um, any questions or concerns about that? Everybody ready to vote then? All in favor then of approving those HRA rates, raise your hand. All right, motion carries. Someone's is, dog's voting too. Is, pardon me? My Someone's dog. dog voted. Oh, yeah, they did. Um, I need a motion to approve the, district, the district's health, dental, and vision insurance rates for the 2021 school year. So moved. Second. Who's, was that you, Rob, second? Mm -hmm. Or Beth? Okay, so it was Angie and Beth? I think it was Beth and Rob, but that's all right. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, well, that's fine, Beth and Rob. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Questions about those? This is what you were trying to address before, Kelly? Yeah. Okay. This, um, if, do we have a, the motion in it so I can talk? Yes, so, the motion is in. So I'm gonna share my screen again. This here will be the rates that we send in for the book. This will be the employee rates on the healthcare side with this is, approving the HRA rates and everything. A couple different things, and I explained this to the employees when we went at the insurance committee. Currently, we have a cap of 521 that we contribute uh, to medical, but anyone that was on the HSA, because last year we were trying to, um, you know, assist people with moving to that, and we were, actually putting in the, the, the premium last year was $475 and some change. And we we're putting in a hundred extra dollars into that account. 
into their HSA. So these numbers still equal $575. The 527 and the $48, next year we're only gonna put $48 into the account. Um, I could have put 521 on the district HSA and then charged the employee $6 and then the HSA amount being $54 or thereabouts. But just for simpleton's sake, it was just to cover the premium uh, in there. So that's what that difference is. When I, there is an increase, there's an 11% increase to this uh, for the employees. And one of the things that we talked about in the meeting is <coughs> with our current uh, COVID situation and us having to be extremely cautious with our budget, Right now, from a district standpoint, our, aside from paying an assessment, our insurance rates from a district standpoint are not changing with the exception of, I do think we're gonna have a large migration of people that are currently in plan six over here, because you see the cost. This is a monthly cost. And if you just take that number times 12, it's almost $2,200. At $2,200 plus a $2,500 deductible, you're at $4,700 if something happens. Over here at $0, this is a $4,500 out-of-pocket max. And the district's giving the employee basically $600. Your net is a $3,900 liability. Um, so I do think that we're going to have large migration to this plan, which is not a bad thing long term for the district. It really isn't because uh, it really kind of pushes consumerism. But there is that, you know, essentially about $54 per month more that the district will pay for every employee that moves over to this plan. Any questions on the medical side? One of the other things too on the HRAs here is the spouse uh, had uh, more of a significant increase uh, mm -hmm. as far as the HRA portion of that. Um, it's roughly a couple hundred dollars. The kids really did not, but it's still, that's a pretty expensive kid package compared to the HSA. Um, so, but I think as a district, we're still offering very competitive, a very competitive option if you uh, would like to take that. On the dental side, um, we propose that and the committee recommends or that the district has always uh, paid for the full employee dental and vision that we continue to do that. These rates are the current rates. So basically the vote there in accepting the rates will be to accept uh, the, the increase. But I was kind of putting on here, if it's more than 10%, I'm gonna bring it back to you. But just assuming that, that the board will pay for everything, any increase not to exceed 10%, so that we can move forward between now and the next meeting. So that would move that an additional $3.91 higher and an additional 77 and a half cents higher, thereabouts. Make sense? Yeah. What would, what would the overall amount be, that 10% increase? I know you said $3 per employee, but- So like, okay, if on a max- Ballpark. Forty-three dollars. Forty-three for the dental. It's currently thirty-nine, and eight or nine dollars for the vision a month. It's currently seven seventy-five. So it's going to be more than eight. So almost nine dollars for the vision. Multiply that by how many employees, or what are we looking at? Uh, and yeah, Vision is going up ten dollars. What's that? What's the vision going up? Yes. 
he did not expect more than a 10% increase on the vision. So times the number of employees, Kelly, are you hitting that over there too? I'm trying to, that's what I'm trying to get what that vision increase was. I would work it at 10%, so. So $102 a year for vision per employee times 400 employees, $40,000 for the vision. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then on the dental side, I'm gonna work off $43 a month times 12 is $516 per employee. The dental is $200,000 a year, 206 approximately. Um, oh, you're doing the total, not the increase? Oh, yeah. you're talking increase, is that what? Yeah, that's what I'm trying to figure out how much each one is going up so I can okay. calculate. On the dental, I have that. If you go $3.91 times 12 months times 400 employees, $18,000, $18,700. Um, Let's just say the vision goes up a dollar, so it's twelve dollars an employee times four hundred, forty-eight hundred dollars on the vision. So overall, about twenty twenty-five thousand cat max. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? All right. So the motion on the floor is to approve the district help dental and vision insurance rates for the next school year. All in favor, raise your hand. Okay, motion carries, very good. <coughs> so that concludes the open session. Um, we do have a couple of items left in exec, which shouldn't take very long, but we'll need to, I'd like to thank the others that attended this evening, Mr. Carberry and Aaron Moore and Regina and we'll see you next time, maybe in person. Maybe not. <laughs> maybe not. Who knows?